Good morning, good morning, St. Mark, and thank you for tuning in to WIBN. We are church at prayer each morning and evening at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So pick up the phone and dial the number you see on the screen. We have daily manna that airs Monday through Saturday at 12 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram Live. We have our Bible study in person on Tuesdays at noon at the main campus. And then we have virtual Bible study at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. If you can't attend the first, there's always a second option. We have Wednesday worship at the main campus on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And the East Campus has their Bible study on the east side at 7 p.m. And we go to Sunday, the day of worship, where we praise and worship the day of Sabbath. We come together collectively to learn, to grow, and to love. Main campus is at 9.30 a.m. and East Campus is at 10. Multiple opportunities for you to hear the word of God. So come out, bring your friends, family, believe in me in 2023. And that is what we're doing. So come out to all of these opportunities that we have here at St. Mark, East and West. We would love to see you. We have a few extra events coming up that we want you to be mindful of. So today, and I do mean today in just a few hours, we're traveling over to the Dr. Phillips Center of Performing Arts for our Pentecost celebration. Three churches coming together to celebrate the Pentecost. That's Sanctuary of Praise, Macedonia, and of course, St. Mark. It's a blessed event and it starts in just a few short hours. So please come over to the facility so that we can all praise together as a family. Multiple churches here in Orlando, we love them all the same. This is the day that we celebrate our Pentecost. We have our graduation Sunday on June 11th at 9.30 a.m. for all of the graduates, high school and college. This is your opportunity to be celebrated. So definitely, if you wanna participate, see Sister Faye Hogan, she will be more than joyed to get you into this great celebration. June 11th, 9.30 a.m. Parents, friends, be sure to mark your calendars. And just a week later, we are gearing up for yet another celebration. It is the celebration of fathers, fathers here in St. Mark, fathers in our community, those who have come and those who are gone. We are forever grateful for all of your contributions. So let us celebrate June 18th, Father's Day. God, we thank you for allowing us to go through this day and God to be here on tonight to sing praises and to give your name all of the praise. God, we ask that you be with us, God. And God, bless the man of God that's bringing the word on tonight, God. Let no one leave here the same way that they came in Jesus' name. And for this, God, we give your name all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. In the name of Jesus, with the clapping of your hands, let's bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless this holy day. Anybody got the Holy Ghost on tonight? Come on, everybody, clap your hands. Come on, Sister Melody, come and bless us on tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody clap your hands and bless him. Save me. 
getting ready to receive a word from on high. Anybody just glad to be in the service on tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank tonight, God. this morning, Hallelujah. amen, our guest preacher is Minister Caleb Danner. He is the youth pastor of St. Mark AME Church. Hallelujah. Amen. And he is also the, the youth pastor, director, all of those names of Alpha Learning Academy. Amen. And we thank God for him. Amen. So he's going to preach the word of God on tonight. Amen. Clap your hands as we receive the word after the singing of the choir. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I 
Hallelujah. Raise your voice, children of God. Raise your voice, children of God. This is not a spectacle. This is not a show. We come here to celebrate, to glorify the King of kings, the Lord of lords. I'm not here to give you a show. I'm here to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to thank the music ministry. I want to thank you for invoking the Holy Spirit in this place and all of the beloved has come into this house today. Um, I, I'm full right now, children of God. I'm full. I'm so full. God is so magnificent. He's so awesome. He's doing such a miraculous thing in this place. He's doing something awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Let us pray. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We magnify you, Lord. We adore you. There is nothing like you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us here tonight. Thank you for traveling mercy, Father God. Thank you for your word being able to come forth. Thank you for saving a wretched man like me, Father God. Now I ask, Lord, the task is too heavy for me, Lord. I ask that you stand in front of me, Lord, and allow me to stand behind you. I'll ask that you work these, these clay lips, Father God, and allow your word to come forth. I thank you for this sanctuary. I thank you for this edifice. I thank you for my pastor, Terrence Renard Gray the first, wherever he may be, Father God, cover him, Father God. Put your angels encampment around him, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, we're the word is coming from the book of Genesis chapter 37 verse 19 and if you have your Bibles I can wait for you for a second or you need to open up your your, your app if you're there say amen if you need a second say hold up if you ain't gonna look for it say go ahead all righty verse 19 Genesis chapter chapter 37 verse 19 here comes that dreamer they said to each other come now let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal have devoured him then we'll see what comes of his dreams a ferocious animal the devil, he's like a roaring lion, seeing who he can devour. This morning, I would like, in this sermonic conversation for, for the sake of brevity, I would like to speak about unexpected hardships from a godly vision. Unexpected hardships from a godly vision. When God has showed you something and what he has showed you gives you some U-turns, some adversity, throws you in a pit. This story is about Joseph, the youngest son of Jacob, whose name was Israel. His brothers had animosity towards him because he was Jacob's favorite son, because he had him at a young, old age. His brothers seen him coming. He said, here comes the dreamers. Now, Joseph had a dream. In the dream, he told his brothers that basically you will bow down to me one day. Told his father, the same dream, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars, that you will bow down to me one day. And his father said, right, me and your mother, we should bow down to you. His father rebuked him. Now, when I did my, when my research and I, and I went into the scripture and I, did, and I looked into the scripture, it was crazy to me for Jacob to rebuke his son when he's had dreams as well. He had a dream when he was running from his own sibling rivalry, Esau. He had a dream of, of angels ascending and descending from a, from a ladder. So for, for him to rebuke his son, who've had the same dreams, blew my mind. 
So they made a, they, they, they strategized, they made a plan. They made a plan to throw him into a pit. But God had favor there at the pit. Because the Bible says the pit was empty. There wasn't no water in the pit. So it was already favor on Joseph's side. So they, they threw him in the pit. And Reuben said, well, we can't kill him. We don't want blood on our hands. And Reuben had a backstory because Reuben did some things in about 10 chapters in Genesis chapter 29 where he slept with one of his father's concubines. So he was already out of the inheritance. So he couldn't, he couldn't have death and whatever he did to his father on his hands. So he said, you know what, brothers, we don't want that kind of blood on our hands. So let's just throw him in the pit. But when he came back to the pit to rescue him, he was gone. They sold him for 20 shekels to the Ishmaelites. Joseph didn't complain. He went to Potiphar's house. He had favor. Potiphar seen the favor of Joseph and put him in control of everything. Everything in his household except his wife. But they say Joseph, the Bible says that Joseph was strong in stature. He was handsome to look at. Kind of remind me of me. <laughs> and Potiphar's wife grabbed him by the coat, told the slaves, look at him, look what he tried to do threw Joseph in prison when Potiphar got back. Yeah. Joseph's in prison, still not complaining. Yeah. Unexpected hardships from a godly vision. In prison, the prison guard sees the favor of Joseph, put him in control of everything in the prison because Joseph was faithful. He did not complain. Put him in control of everything in the prison. Unbeknownst to Joseph, the cupbearer, the chief cupbearer, and the chief baker comes to prison, has dreams. Now from 17 years old when Joseph had this dream until the time he's in prison, God has matured his spirit. Now he's interpreting dreams. So... The cupbearer and the baker has a dream. The cupbearer has a dream and he asks, he says, what, he come, he's walking through the prison, despondent and looking sad. Now, if somebody should have been sad, it should have been Joseph. Joseph should have been despondent and dejected and walking around pouting and, and, and looking, cussing people out and saying, what you want, what you talking about? But he looked at his brothers and said, what's wrong? The brother said, uh, we had this dream and we don't understand what this dream is. Joseph said, doesn't interpretation belong to the Lord? Yeah. It's not me, Lord. It's, it's you that interprets the dream. He's still going to the Lord. He interprets first the cupbearer. He tells the cupbearer, you will be restored back to your original position. The baker hears this, he hears a favorable report, and he says, oh, me, I'm next, I'm next, me, 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 please, me. Unfortunately, it wasn't so good for the baker. He said, in three days, you will be off with your head, you will be impaled. So they, they go back to the, the baker goes, I'm sorry, the baker goes back to the pharaoh, but Joseph told him something while he was in prison. He said, listen, when you get back to your position, remember me. Remember me. Don't forget about me. Now, my, my, my brothers has forsaken me. Potiphar has forsaken me. He knew I, he knew I was a man of God. He, he thought I wanted his wife. No, Potiphar, but she had my coat. She had my jacket. My brothers had my jacket, too. So twice, somebody had Joseph's jacket. So he goes back to Pharaoh. The baker goes back to Pharaoh. Two years pass. Pharaoh has a dream. In Pharaoh's dream, basically the dream, I surmise the dream was about having seven years of famine and having seven years of abundance. 
Joseph, they go back, he, the, the, the cup bearer, the servant remembers there's a man in prison that I was with who can interpret dreams. He, go, he goes back to the prison, goes get Joseph, brings Joseph back. Joseph tells Pharaoh, this is what you need to do. Still hasn't complained, children of God. In his faithfulness, Pharaoh puts him second in command because the soothsayers and the div div diviners, they could not tell Pharaoh in, in Egyptian culture, they, they, dreams were, were paramount in Egyptian culture. And all these ungodly people with their burning of sage and their crystals and all these idolatry things that they had could not determine what these dreams meant. Because interpretation belongs to God. Now, there are a few points that I wanted to hit on this, on this sermonic conversation. Unexpected hardships from a godly vision. What do you do when God has set, showed you and you know this is God's telling you this, but there's a Eviction notice on your door. When your, when your boss tells you we don't need you no more. When you have been eating right, your diet has been working, but you cannot get your blood pressure down. But God has already told you by my stripes, you are healed. All sickness is not unto death. God has told you this, but what do you do when you have unexpected hardships? from a godly vision. One thing I have in my exegeting the scripture has found out is that you have to have undeniable faith, unmovable faith, meaning that whatever comes your way, meaning that if your brother, your mama, your sister, your husband, your children turn their back on you, I know that the Lord is on my side. Faith that can move a mountain. Undeniable faith. You also have to be in perpetual prayer, meaning that you have to pray without ceasing. Now, the altar is good on Sundays. The altar can is where you lay all of your burdens down. But you don't need this altar to talk to God. You can talk to God on your way to Chevron. You can talk to God when the boss is getting on your nerves. You can talk to God when that child just won't get right. You can talk to God when the husband has left you with everything and he know you got all these bills and he going on the other side of town. Or when that wife have left you. You can still be, continue to be in perpetual prayer. Rejoice. And hope, be patient in tribulation, and be in constant prayer. I'm not going to hold you guys long. Number three, you got to have true humility. Through Joseph's struggle, he never complained. He never was prideful. He never was a person that said, me, me, me. Through the scripture, Joseph, if you, read, if you read it in Genesis, Joseph never had a gripe with God. He never complained. He never said it was my brother's fault. It, it, he just was faithful and he stayed in true humility. He was ready to help someone else. Number four, passion you have to have passion, a zeal for God. And you also have to have an eagerness to serve. The book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew says, the greatest among you are servers. Everybody want to be served. Everybody want to be at the top. But Jesus says, the greatest amongst you are servers and that's what Joseph, that's how Joseph got from a pit to a prison to being a pillar of an entire nation because he was a servant 
He was ready to serve. Now, serving ain't easy because the Bible don't say just serve people who nice to you. The Bible don't say serve people you like. You got to serve the people when you walk into the sanctuary that look, you know how they look at you. You got to serve the people who don't say good morning to you. You have to serve the people that you know gossip about you. The greatest among you are servers. Fifth, which I believe all of them are important, but I believe number five is paramount, and that's forgiveness. Forgiveness. And Joseph, when he was second in command of Egypt, his brothers came back. And in chapter 50, verse 20, when Jacob dies, they devise another plan. They, they, they good with making plans and strategizing. They say, we're going to tell them that daddy said, forgive us. And he says something in chapter 50, verse 20. He says, what you meant for evil, what you meant for evil. The old folks say, when you, when, you dig, when you dig a hole for me, you better dig one for yourself. What you meant for evil, God meant it for good. Forgiveness, you cannot inherit the king of, kingdom of heaven with a heart and heart. You cannot proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and you have not forgave because unforgiveness will be your children would inherit that. As a youth pastor, I got to tell you when, you, when you talk about that person you dislike, guess who's in the back seat listening? And guess who's in the, in, in the pew next to you when you're screaming, hallelujah! It's not about how, how, how loud we scream hallelujah and we jump up and down. It's about when we leave out these double doors, how straight we walk and how, and how we live a Christ-like life. Anybody can scream glory, glory, hallelujah inside the sanctuary, but what does your life look like outside of these walls? Agape love. Forgiveness is a part of agape love. Agape love. I equate them the two. Jesus says, what greater love is it for another man to lay his life down for his brother? That is a love that's undeniable. That is an agape love. Agape love says, I see you in that hole in that pit over there and I feel sorry for you. Agape love says, I'm going to get down there in that hole with you. And we're going to figure this thing out. We're going to get this thing worked out. And we're going to pray and we're going to fast and we're going to do supplication until we hear an answer from the Lord. I was, I was, uh, I was at, I was at a uh, Planet Smoothie this morning, and I usually when I go to Planet Smoothie, I get my normal. I get a uh, PB Blues. I get heavy, heavy blueberries, heavy peanut butter, light ice, um, with a, and I add cocoa to it. And I know the guy who owns. He owns several. He owns several. Planet Smoothies. He owns the one that, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to give him no free advertisement. He got to pay for that. Uh, but he owns, several, he owns several of them. And uh, this, this morning while I was meditating on the Lord and I was meditating on the scripture, I went in to get my smoothie, large, and when I was giving him my order, he said, uh, oh, if you want heavy now, we're going to charge you for that extra scoop and we're going to charge you for this and we're going to charge you for that. And I said to myself, I said, um, Adam don't complain when I come in here. Adam's the owner. He said, uh, you know Adam? I said, yeah, I know Adam. Now, if an employee at Planet Smoothie gets right at the name of Adam, what do you think these people will do at the name of Jesus? When we call on the name of Jesus, all tongues shall confess, all knees shall bow, that he is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Alpha and Omega. Call on the name of Jesus. We have an advocator. 
that sits on the right hand side. That's what this thing is all about. I don't have an itchy ear sermon for you. I can't, you know, I can't hoop and holler. I can't sing like my pastor because he can sing, can't he, guys? I can't, though. But what I can tell you, if you give your life to Jesus Christ, all of your life, if he is, because this is the thing about Jesus. If he's not Lord of all, he don't want to be Lord at all. You can't keep, you can't, you can't have one foot in with Jesus and one foot out. You got to be all in with Jesus. If you're all in with Jesus, he's definitely going to be all in with you. I thank you guys. I love you guys. Continue to persevere. Continue to be resilient in the Lord. Don't let no dream killer in this atmosphere, even if he's in the governor's mansion, even if his name is what you know his name, even if he's running for re-election, don't allow these dream killers to dictate to you because the government sits on my God's shoulders. It's that no, no man that has to put his underwear one leg at a time can have me all shaken up because I know who holds the future. I know who, who has the world in the palm of his hand, and it's my Lord and Savior. You guys have a great night. from a godly vision, unmovable faith, perpetual prayer, humility, zeal for God and for, to be a servant, forgiveness, and agape love. Talk about a wonderful lesson. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for bringing the word to us. Well, at this point, one of the major decisions of your life, we can come in we can pray, we can sing, we can hear the word, but the most important decision of your entire life is will you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Minister Kayla beautifully outlined the benefits of serving God, the benefits of loving him, the benefits of having the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your Lord. So won't you receive him today? I ask that you stand to your feet and that we just say we surrender all to him because we do. your life, especially on this Pentecost Sunday, where we invite the Holy Spirit to dwell within us to help us live a very best life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, our next part where we want to honor the Lord is where we honor him with our gifts. Any tithers in the house? Yeah. Hallelujah. Is the Lord faithful? Hallelujah. So we know that we do this every Sunday, Zechariah chapter 8, verses 12, and we have various ways of giving whether you are dropping it off at the church, cash app, through our 
app or through our kiosk here, however you give, we ask that you honor the Lord. I am a living witness. He is a promise keeper. He will open the windows of heaven. He will pour out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. He will rebuke the devourer and destroy the canker worm. He will show himself faithful. I'm a living witness that he'll do it. Hallelujah. So let's come on together. Take a look at Zechariah chapter 8, verse 12. Starting with verse 12, and let's lift that up together. The seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops, and the heavens will drop their dew. I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of this people. That's God's promise. And then, whether you're giving electronically or by check or by mail, however you're giving, we lift our gifts up to the Lord. And let's repeat our prayer. The seed in my hand has come forth from the fruit which grew on the tree or vine, which came forth from the seed. I planted by faith into your word the very first time. I'm giving it back to you, and I'm believing in advance. It shall, it will produce a harvest that shall be, it's got to be, can't help but be, exceedingly, abundantly, and above everything I may ask, I may hope, and I may think. In Jesus' name, reach up your hands, I receive it. Across your chest, I claim it. And clap your hands because, Lord, we thank you for it. Amen. We thank you all again for joining us tonight on this Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah for the unexpected hardships from Godly Vision. We pray that you've learned something, taken something with you that you can apply to your everyday life. We give you glory to God, praise, and honor. We ask Minister Caleb. We thank you again, kind sir, for your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we give a shout out to Mrs. and family who are here. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Minister Caleb, if you'll come and give our benediction, please, and that'll be great. And we'll look forward to seeing you all next time. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy and glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, forever be the dominion, the glory, and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Imani Broadcast. Thank you for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday.